This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hello everyone, doing another um, Karlov Manor draft. We have a pretty strong first pack. Uh, the Code Breaker's really good. Case of the Gateway Express is really good. Inside Source, Soul Innervation, Tunnel Tipster. These are all cards I feel reasonable about first picking. And then the Satchel's a pretty legit, like, build around in the format. Slice from Shadows is pretty good. I'm sort of leading Codebreaker. I mean, this has just turned out to be a format where, which is like all the formats in the last year, uh, unfortunately, where, like, two drops that are good are, like, at a premium, like... They're like what where we used to take really good removal is like where you take good two drops. And this is certainly one of those has all this additional upside in addition to just being a great two drop. I do really like inside source in case of the Gateway Express. Good chance we won't end up in white because the people to our left will grab those. Person of interest is pretty good, too. I left that out of my list, but we'll go code breaker here. Double Sumala Sentry. That's a pretty good card. Takes a little bit of work, but we've also got a Novice Inspector. I know I just passed two really good white cards, but the Inspector's too good to pass up. Like, it's just, like, an incredible common. Um, you know, I thought it was going to be really good in the format. It's been even better than really good. Like, I'd even take it over the uh, Oblivion Ring effect in the format. It's just, it's got a useful creature type. You know, playing out creatures every turn is important in this format. Makes a clue. Like, there's just nothing to be upset about. It's just really good. All right, Long Goodbye is a pretty good removal spell. Buried in the Garden is pretty good, but probably just take Shock, you know. Um, the more expensive removal is a little worse than usual because of Disguise. Shock still has this fail case where you kill their three mana play with for three mana, and then it still has all the upside that Shock has. So I think we go with Shock. Also nice with the Code Breaker. It's an early spell to get into our graveyard. Early spell to trigger Prowess, whichever ends up mattering more. It'd be interesting to see what happens with white, um, whether or not it really is just gone because we've passed two really good white cards. Still seeing some pretty good ones, though. Um, you know, tricks are really good in the format, so Auspicious Arrival's been nice. I do like Tunnel Tipster, but we're probably taking a herring or a person of interest given that we have two pretty good red cards so far. I do like the herring, but I think person of interest is a little better. Um, you know, helps you go wide. The Herring has been way better than expected, partly because tricks are good, partly because two drops are important, partly because artifacts matter. But, um, yeah, I think Person of Interest is is better. I don't hate the Vigilante either. It's been a little better than I expected. But, yeah, we'll take, we'll take the Person. Okay, another Auspicious Arrival. I think it's better than the Chase is on, which I think is a good trick. But, you know, two mana tricks are just so much better than three mana ones on average. I do like the Bloomkin and Eavesdropper a reasonable amount. We could consider taking a green card because it doesn't exactly seem like we're getting all the white cards in the world. But for now, I think I'll take an Auspicious Arrival. No Witnesses is interesting. And it's probably what I'm supposed to take. I mean, it's not great, especially for an aggro deck. It, but even if you're not an aggro deck, you know, nuking the whole board and giving your opponent a clue, like, it's not great, but... It's not bad either, you know, it's like a C or C plus is kind of how it's panned out, I think, and that's not a terrible pick six, you know, and it has like crazy upside, obviously. All right, we'll take a haunch now. There's still a slice, which is pretty nice. The Affair's okay fixing, but like, I don't value it that highly compared to like the Clue Land or the Dual Lands. Those I would take over Crovod Haunch. I don't think I'd take Public Thoroughfare over the Haunch. The problem being, especially if you're not in a deck with a lot of clues, is that it's like a double tap land, and, and that's kind of brutal. Especially in a format where you want to be playing one drops and two drops and stuff. And we're doing okay on that front, um, you know, for early on in the draft. We can shock their early drops. We've got a Crovod Haunch, and uh, yeah. All right, so of these cards, I think Unscrupulous Agent's probably the best. I like Cold Case Cracker as well, um, but I think I like Agent a little bit more. I like Fanatical Strength, too, for what that's worth. This trick, I've won and lost a lot of games to Fanatical Strength. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing about the format, but 
Okay, so still a slice here. I think we go ahead and grab it. Black seems pretty open. It is the weakest color in the set, I think, in terms of, like, win rate, but it's not so bad that it's undraftable, and when you're getting late agents and slices, like, you know, may as well jump on board. Red, interestingly, seems less open than white, but the cards we have in red are pretty good, so it's going to be hard for me to want to not take them. I may take a thoroughfare here. Um, Silica Stalker's okay, but I do think now it's time to take some fixing, even if it's mediocre, over like a mediocre creature, because mediocre fixing opens the door for a lot of stuff. Yeah, we'll take a Phantom. It's nothing special, but it's better than Flotsam and Jetsam. This is not exactly an exciting black card to still be around, but it's not completely unplayable. I kind of think Lead Pipe is, though. Ooh. <laughs> so, Prowess deck. Yeah, I think this is probably what we're supposed to take. It is a little iffy because red ended up not being that open. But the three red cards we do have are quite good. And it's pretty hard to pass a second code breaker. Um, really makes me want to go hard on, on a spell deck, which isn't really a thing in the format. And it's not like we're giving up a lot in this pack. I mean, the Meddler's okay. This is decent fixing. You know, there's not really anything good for us in this pack anyway. Like, exciting, certainly as a first pick, other than the code breaker anyway. So we'll just take another code breaker here. All right, Case of the Burning Masks is pretty exciting. I do like Fester Leech, Extract, uh, but yeah, this is just the best card. And taking another really good red card to start this pack sort of solidifies us into red. I feel like our black, I mean, our white is probably better than our black right now, but that could change. Um, yeah, I mean, another Unscrupulous Agent is here. I do like Felonious Rage. It's a good trick. You know, the one and two mana tricks are basically all good in this format. Um, and so is the, that first strike three mana one. It's just not as good. Sanguine Savior is okay. If we end up in black-white, it's especially... It's pretty nice if you're in black-white. If you're not and you have to cast it face down first, it does lose some luster. That's for sure. And um, I, so I don't think that's where we're going to end up. Felonious Rage is good, of course, with our Code Breakers. But I kind of feel like I need to take an agent here. Okay, so Dog Walker really makes me want to go red-white. You know, you can play it outside of red-white, but it does work a lot better in red-white because, first of all, you can play it on two, and second of all, it's easier to turn face up. Um, yep, yeah, we're going to take Dog Walker. Are we abandoning black? I mean, probably. I mean... Our red-white looks pretty good. I think we run no witnesses, like I said. It's it's a little awkward. Um, it gets better if we have some ways to discard it. because And there are a few of those. I guess our code breaker can sort of do it, but in an awkward way. Let's get like four code breakers. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah, we have one piece of fixing. It's not particularly good, though. All right, so now, well, speaking of fixing, I kind of think I take Shadowy Backstreet. I like the Vigilante. It would be fine in our deck, but I think Felonious Rage is good too, but fixing is just so good. You know, it just opens the door to so many other things. These Scry Lands, Surveil Lands are pretty good, and I don't think we're giving up anything that good, you know, to do it. So I think that's what we're supposed to do. It could already help us splash like a slice, which isn't a terrible idea. We have another fixing land here. However, there's also a Night Drinker Moroi, which I think is pretty good. I'm probably supposed to take the Bystander, though. Um, I do think Thundering Falls is good enough fixing to really think about here, especially over a medium two-drop, but we do kind of need more two-drops if we're going to be an aggro deck. So I think I have to value that mediocre two-drop a little more than I normally would. Yeah... Suspicious Detonation, I don't love. I hope I don't play it, but it's definitely better than Expose the Culprit and Essence of Antiquity, so. Yeah, interesting. Don't have nearly enough detectives to make uh, Thinking Cap worth it. So yeah, we don't really have anything for us in this pack. I think surveillance monitor is nice, but not for us. Um, I guess if I picked up some some more fixing, could have thought about it. 
Yeah, it's not looking awesome in terms of what we've decided to do. Um, you know, <laughs> in a pinch, we can play this face down. <laughs> so I think that means we take it. I mean, hopefully we don't have to play it, but... Yeah, more mediocre. Like, these black cards are here, but none of them are good. So it's not like we should have been in black. Like, these are just bad black cards. So, all right. So we'll take a case. Like, it's not completely unplayable. It does give us more fixing. If we open some crazy bomb in the next pack that happens to be black, we can play it. So there's that. There's a second case, too. Not a bomb. It is black, but it's not a very good card. Uh, yeah, so makeshift binding, I think, is the pickup here. Dog walker is good. Am I supposed to take dog walker over binding? I don't have so much removal that I love that idea. So I think I probably take binding here. As much as I like dog walker. Yeah, we'll take a binding. If I had more removal, I think I'd be more in on dog walker, but... So, Alquist Proft is really good. Um, probably just a Vengeful Tracker, though. Medium 2-drop, but, like, that's kind of what we need. We do need to pick up some tricks now. I guess we have one Auspicious Arrival. Like, one more trick would be good. Um, if I had good enough fixing to play Alquist Proft, I'd think about it. But, you know, he's less good when you don't have a lot of clues and when you can't play him early. Like, you want to be able to play him on turn 3, so him as a splash isn't exactly... Super enticing, so we'll just take the decent two drop. Yeah, assemble the players. It's too hard to make it work. Another auspicious arrival. Do I want it more than red herring, though? I'm not so sure I do. You know what I wouldn't mind is the mass pump uh, spell. That thing has been pretty good in, in red-white. Yeah, I think we take a herring here over arrival. It's just been like a quality two drop, like better than bystander and stuff like that, and... I gave them the same grade in the set review. I think I gave them both a C minus. And I think Bystander has been one, but Red Herring's been at least a C, as I talked about in my Need to Notes video last uh, weekend. Dual land, not one that really helps us. You know, Rift Burst Hellion is something we can turn face up. There's also a Gravestone Strider. It is a two drop, gives us some fixing, but it's not like we have anything that exciting to, to, to play off of the fixing in this particular draft. So I think we'd probably just take a Hellion. Okay. Fender at large it is. In the end, it doesn't feel like red-white ended up being super open, um, to say the least. Another detonation, huh? You know, we've seen good, like, I think Onlooker and Agent are good. So Black's, like, open, but we still, you know, a lot of it just isn't very good. Mistway Spy is pretty good. Looks like blue maybe is uh, more open than anything. Basic land cycling, huh? Um, Forum Familiar is okay-ish. We don't really need the fixing for Treacherous Terrain. You know, if you do need it, I think it's actually a pretty nice piece of fixing because, you know, especially if you have Collect Evidence because you can get into your graveyard early and whatnot. But, All right, due diligence, eh. Do I want a bystander more than I want due diligence? Probably. I probably do. Another Rift Burst Hellion. Yeah, I think we're going to end up having to... Our draft definitely train wrecked a little bit. So we're going to be playing some subpar cards to make things... Uh, to get to enough playables. <laughs> Which isn't really where you want to be. But these things happen. Um, yeah, so we're playing Rift Burst Hellions. Playing a Defenestrated Phantom. Obviously, we're not cutting anything that we have like in our deck. Um, may need to run a second Suspicious Detonation. And I was joking about um, <laughs> running Rakish Scoundrel <laughs> just to play it face down. But that might be what we do. You know, I wonder if it's worth it to Splash Slice... You know, um, if I run Shadowy Backstreet, Public Thoroughfare, 
like as low as the power level of our cards is, it's kind of worth considering here. We're not running forests, I can tell you that much. Um, yeah. I mean, we have the fixing to do it. It's just a question of whether it's worth it. But because we're so low on playables, I think it probably is. Um, is there another black card I have any interest in splashing? Not really. It's a blue card I wouldn't hate splashing, but that's beyond us. Um, so either I run another detonation or I run Case of the Shattered Pact. I guess detonation's probably better. Don't love it, but, you know, it does something. And uh, Case doesn't really <laughs> a huge chunk of the time. So, yeah. All right. So this will be an interesting draft to see, you know, after I chose the wrong lane to see how it actually pans out. One more trick would have been nice, but, you know, I'll be okay. Probably. Hopefully. Okay, turn one novice inspector is actually going to let us set up public thoroughfare less painfully than than it usually goes, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to play it for a little while because I want to just go one drop, two drop. But we also didn't get the mass pump spell, which would have been nice. Those are the two things, like one more trick and a mass pump spell instead of having to splash a black removal spell, uh, would have made this deck significantly better, I think. All right, turn one, novice inspector. Pretty good way to start the form to start a game in this format. Well, we got our other uh, source of fixing, but yeah, we definitely want to play vengeful tracker here instead of instead of one of those. All right, so they're going kind of slow over there, which I think we are happy with. I think I'm going to play Backstreet instead of Thoroughfare, because Surveilling is pretty nice. Um, and then I'll just crack a clue for my turn. Well, I guess if I want to crack a clue for my turn, playing Thoroughfare makes more sense. Yeah, it kind of does. It does make more sense. I'm not going to get to Surveil, but we have two removal spells in our hand, so I think I'll probably be okay. If I don't surveil this turn, like, we can play both of those removal spells next turn. So, yeah. Thoroughfare. One nice thing about clues is it doesn't matter if they're tapped on, like, treasure and stuff like that. And we do still dig a card deeper by doing this. Well, we would have done it with... We would have done dug two cards deeper, potentially, if we played the backstreet. Yeah, that's kind of annoying for our three mana removal spells. All right, I like that though. So now it's backstreet time. Let's see what's on top. Rift Burst Hellion, huh? I mean, more creatures seems good and it's not like we're that far away from being, we actually can turn it face up, so. Bait, you know, not right now, but with the mana we already have, we can do it. So I think we leave it. Um, yeah, and then we play Red Herring. Send both of those in. They trade for Tracker, which is fine. So, okay, they scoop. Yeah, I mean, we just... We didn't do anything that special, you know, but... Curving out, basically, is is enough of a thing in this format that, especially if you're playing, like, enchantments that don't do anything, that you can end up, you can end up in a spot that is not so good for you. It's too bad I didn't open up, like, a black bomb. That would make me feel really good about splashing uh, black, but... All right. I wish I was going first, but that's kind of true in this format in general. <laughs> so, you know, it's a pretty good hand. 
far as this deck goes. Like our detonations are gonna are rough. I think um, <laughs> it's a rough card in general. I think in this format, just because it's such clunky removal. Ah, well, if we keep getting turn one novice inspectors, just out of luck then i had a deck with like three of them once and i don't think i had turn one novice inspectors as much as i've already had them uh in this game so yeah this is a time where we just play out Codebreaker face up and, and smash i think um i mean there's something to be said for holding on to it and just playing bystander here but i think i think that's getting a little too cute i think we just go for the damage here I mean, in terms of mana efficiency, maybe it's a little better to play a turn three code breaker face down, but all right. So yeah, code breaker is gonna die here, but that's probably okay. Then we play face down rift burst hellion. Well, I guess we want to play the phantom since it turns face up in the near future. I wish I had a trick. That's where things can get really backbreaking, but. Trading is fine. So yeah, let's play face down Phantom here. I do have a clue, so I can crack it and then detonate. Okay, it looks like our opponent's having mana problems, which will obviously benefit us. <laughs> so, attack for three. Face down Rift Burst Hellion. You know, especially if you stumble on mana and your opponent has two removal spells in their hand, it's pretty brutal. All right. Yeah, <laughs> they're in desperation mode. So I think we're just going to spend our turn turning this face up because that's just better than anything else we can do, so... And then maybe next turn we spend our turn turning that face up. I don't know. They did get a creature, but yeah. <laughs> so far, we've had... We've got... We, we're 2-0 and with this thing, but... That opponent, you know, their... Their luck was a big factor in us winning the game, I think. Of course, they were also playing Wrench and stuff like that, which has proven to just not be... What you want to be doing in this format, unfortunately. And that always hurts. It's a little surprising they didn't even have a disguise creature. Like, if you get to 3 mana in this format... You should probably be able to add something to the board. <laughs> but, you know, if your luck's bad enough, I guess. You can't really keep a hand that doesn't let you add to stuff to the board by turn two. Or subtract from it. So, like, this hand is keepable. No Witnesses also makes it a little more keepable because it can get us back ahead from behind. Um, but having Shock, you know... We don't have anything to add to the board right now. I mean, we're probably going to draw a Novice Inspector. But, um... <laughs> what if we did... But um, having a way to subtract from the board works, too. I mean, you just have to be able to do something. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> I don't really want to shock their creature, because then they can tutor up whatever they want. This has been a little better than I thought it would be. I think I gave it a C-plus in the set review, but it puts you in a pretty rough pick-your-poison scenario, to be honest. Maybe I'm still just supposed to kill it, because it's going to do a bunch of damage... And it's not, you know, them getting to tutor up whatever they want isn't great for us, but I have no witnesses in my hand. So I think just preserving our life total is fine with me. Um, still not having anything to add to the board's a little rough here, but... I am glad I can deal with that, though. Yep, that is solved now, so they can tutor something up later. I wonder if I'm just supposed to, like, let them play out their whole hand now. Probably, I guess. Well, I'm supposed to play Novice Inspector, at least. But, yeah. Yeah. Fifth land, I mean, it doesn't hurt. Am I likely to draw a fifth land by other means at some point? Probably. Yeah, let's put it in the graveyard. And play Novice Inspector. 
The reason it's worth playing this out is because having a clue in the aftermath of no witnesses is pretty good. I think we do probably lean in the direction of getting them to play out their hand. Um, it does get harder when they're making clues and stuff. We probably do crack this now. Uh, you know, I was talking about maybe waiting until... Um, waiting until they had... Uh, until after I wrath, but I have the mana up now, so why wouldn't I do it now? The only thing that would be nice about waiting is that it would make my detonation cheaper, but... Hopefully they're tutoring up, tutoring up a creature that they think is unkillable or something. Um, there aren't... Is there an indestructible? I guess there's like the, the barbed servitor wouldn't die to no witnesses, but I think... I think everything else in the format dies to no witnesses, unless I'm not thinking about something. Yeah, they're gonna crack a clue. Is it worth blocking with Novice Inspector here? Just to prevent damage. I mean, I don't hate it. Um... Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. We're in a weird situation when you have no witnesses. It's like... Changes the game a little. We don't want to make it too obvious we have it either. So, you know. Okay. We've got a hand now that can... Definitely add some... Relevant stuff to the board. And that makes me think a little differently about things. I think we play face down dog walker here. Um, because we can turn it up, face up, trade with this, and get two one ones. So, that seems pretty good. Let's make sure Auto Tapper's not doing something insane here. Yeah. There's, like, no way for it to screw us here, because all of our lands can turn it face up. The green plus three plus three trick is pretty brutal in these situations, but we're at 20, so it's not quite as devastating as it might otherwise be. They might have the plus two plus zero fight thing. Or slice. Um, How much are they paying? Two? So I could turn it face up and get two one ones, or I could cast Auspicious Arrival on it and get a clue and make the blank this. Which, which is better? Um, I think Auspicious Arrival is probably better. I can't block this turn, but I think just keeping... You know, two for wanting them effectively is probably what we wanted to do there. Another one of those. Hmm. Innocent bystanders, pretty nice for blocking the eavesdropper. So, yeah, I think we'll attack here. Then we will turn it face up. I wonder if just... Oh, I screwed that up. I was thinking about other things already. Um, obviously, I meant to play Innocent Bystander. But um, what I was going to say that I was thinking about when I accidentally clicked in my turn is if just attacking with Vigilance was better because that way I either trade with one of these or I have a blocker. Ooh. So that can make things indestructible. It might be time for no witnesses. <laughs> it might be time. I think they're about to suit up that perimeter enforcer. No, okay, it's definitely time for no witnesses now. It is definitely time. Do I wish I had my bystander in play to trump the eavesdrop, chump the eavesdropper like I planned? Yes, but you know, what are you gonna do? All right.
This is probably what they tutored up. I have no way of knowing for sure, of course, but... So... Um, I think we attack with Dog Walker. There's something to be said for attacking with everything, but I'm going to give them a clue. If Well, no matter what, I'm going to give them a clue, aren't I? Yeah, because they'll have the most creatures either way. Will also allow me to solve this, which is in itself worth something. Yeah, so let's attack... Right, we get some free damage, and then we no witnesses, and then play our bystander. That gets solved. Not a bad turn, but I wish I didn't have to no witnesses as early as I did, but I kind of had to once the uh, once that thing came down. We still come out ahead. You know, we only lost one real card. The other two were tokens. What's the last card in their hand? Okay, well, that doesn't scare me that much. They will get to use the clue I gave them to destroy my bystander, but it's not like... It's not like that hurts my feelings that much. I think we have a good chance here, knowing that they're out of cards here, and we have a bunch in our hand, plus case of the burning uh, masks. Do I play face-up defenestrated phantom? Probably. I could crack this. I might just have a better play. It's probably what I'm supposed to do. It's tempting to try to hold on to it, but there's enough stuff in green and white that could destroy this before I ever get to use it that I think I'm just going to use it now. <sighs> okay. Well, Rift Burst Hellion's pretty good. It's less good when they know... It's one of my face-down creatures, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's better than the Herring or the other options here, so... And then I can play out two face-downs. I'm probably just supposed to take five here if they attack me. And they do. I think we just take five. Okay. So. What would I like to do here? You know, turning this into a 6-7 hopefully grinds the board to a shrieking halt. Um, so I think that's what our plan is here. So. I think we attack with Defenestrated Phantom here and see, leave back the mana for this. I could also play Person of Interest and Vengeful Tracker, and honestly, maybe that's just better, huh? Yeah, it probably is. Adding more bodies to the board just sounds better. I would have attacked a little differently because they know that this is Rift Burst Hellion, but I think we kind of want to make this game... I mean, obviously we're at 7, so... We need to, uh, you know, not take damage. <laughs> so having a 6-7 around is one way to make that happen, but so is adding three bodies to the board. Granted, one of them can't block, but still. All right, so I think we go ahead and double block under City Eliminator. Go to five. They have a trick here. It really sucks for us in this format. It has its share of tricks, so... There's a good chance they do. But it would have been even worse if we triple blocked. So, at least making them use the trick. Shock or something stinks too, but not nearly as much. Yeah, I can sort of live with that, I think. Okay, um, well, you're attacking. Other than that, I think we passed the turn. Go with the Rift Burst Hellion plan. All 
right. So I think we try to trade here and block here. Turn our Rift Burst Hellion face up. Luckily, this can't be countered, so we don't have to worry about Ward, at least. <laughs> it's clunky as heck, but we don't have to worry about Ward. Hmm. Well, Codebreaker is going to be nice at some point. I mean, if we can make the game go long enough, I guess that's key. All right, so let's go ahead and detonation the face down creature. I grab a land. I think I can live with that. The reason I do this now, incidentally, is so my person can get in for two. And I may just swing for eight here, actually. I mean, is there a chance they draw something that kills us? Yes, but we also put them in a spot where if they don't draw something here, they're dead. I think it's worth it. They may block. Yeah, they may also say Maybe they block my Rift First Hellion, in which case it's less likely they can just straight up kill us. So that's good. They're thinking about exiling something from our graveyard, which I don't think our deck cares about in the least. Right? No. No, I don't think it does. Oh, I guess Codebreaker cares, actually, doesn't it? And they hit a sorcery. An instant, rather. So it does... It does matter. All right, well, our sweeper pretty much won us that game. You know, we, um... We're way behind on board and staring at a rare that they had tutored up. And, uh... And we swept the board. So, <laughs> so that worked. We gave them a clue, which they got to use to kill one of our creatures for free. But the creature they killed was, you know, a random 2-1. So it didn't really hurt our feelings. All right. I like going first. Don't love having two Rift Burst, Hel Rift Burst Hellions in my opening hand, but I can live with it, I guess. So if they don't play a one drop here, we play Code Breaker. Yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna Code Breaker here. Because if they stumble and don't have a two drop here, like suddenly they're down to sixteen. Um, and there's a good chance we just get to trade with whatever they play. Or they don't play anything. Like like I said, they stumble. Do you need more red mana for that at some point? Maybe we'll draw it next turn, kill their thing, and transform this. That would be pretty nice. I always say transform. Solve. Solve it. <clears throat> If we don't, I guess we play another Hellion face down. Crobot Haunch. So that'll buff this to a 3-2. That's pretty nice, I think. Makes it more likely they trade with it. I could equip it, but obviously adding another body to the board is, is way better than equipping something here. Do you take 5? I think we're pretty happy if they take 5 here. And we're okay with a trade. Hey, they take five. I like it. Do you need red mana? Um... The fail case next turn is we play Bystander and equip Crovot Haunch, which is not a bad turn by any means, but... I'd much rather, like, kill something, but no, that's not going to happen. Neither Hellion can turn face up either. So, let's equip the Haunch. We did kind of run out of gas, which isn't awesome for us. Um, who do I equip? Codebreaker, I guess. I 
Hmm. Yep, let's go with Codebreaker. Swing out. Surely they don't take eight, right? <laughs> they haven't blocked yet, so it's possible. They might think they can get back ahead from behind, but I don't really see how. Okay. A block makes sense. At least one block makes sense. Yeah, we are perfectly fine with that, I think. It's too bad I couldn't play my case of the burning masks, but, you know, what are you going to do? Your man is not always perfect, and ours kind of has been so far, so. If I draw a red source, I can also turn this monster face up, which is obviously pretty attractive. Drawing a plains here would be a pretty horrible draw. Drawing either a mountain or, like, any other card in our deck <laughs> would be good. But a plains, not so much. Okay, well, that's not that good, but it, it is nice having a fail case. Like, a, like a, things just went really sideways on us, and they kind of look like they're about to, don't they? So, it is an awkward draw here, that's for sure. So, let's go ahead and equip... Innocent bystander. And do I swing with both again? Probably. I mean... That's what I think we're supposed to do, yeah. I was sort of hoping they'd block the bystander, but... Maybe they can turn this into something big enough that it just kills my creature. Yeah, they can. All right. They do go to five. I like that part. But it is looking like we may need to uh, blow up the whole board at some point. If we're going to have a chance at winning. We can wait a little while on it. We just needed, like, one more creature, and we probably could have killed him, but alas. What if they're mono green? They got, like, two of these and an Archdruid's Charm. I mean, obviously they're splashing something, at least, because you wouldn't run public... Th it's just a bad land if you're not actually... Oh, for example. So we're going to take eight here all of a sudden. That feels... that feels good. Although, can they really attack me for eight? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they can't actually hit me that hard. They can only hit me for three here. Well, no witnesses is looking pretty good, but I don't even need to cast it just yet, so I probably won't. Do I want to play another Bystander, though? Because if I draw one more land, I can no witnesses and then play Bystander. Um, which is pretty good. I think we probably... Just pass here. And we'll probably end up no witnesses -ing at the end of their next turn. I mean, not at the... I wish. I wish it was an instant. No, but uh, on our next turn. And we still have this around to give us some bodies. But... I think doing this is fine. If they have, like, straight-up removal here, it's not going to feel so good. I, I can... Uh, these come into play tap, don't they? No. Unlike on Dogwalker, they do come into play untap. So in a pinch, I can at least uh, crack the haunch here. Well, that is interesting. I mean, I definitely block, because even if they... Turn it face up into another Bloomkin, for example. Um, I get a clue. Hmm. Maybe I'm just supposed to take the hit. If they don't turn it face up, it's a lot worse for us. I think we probably need to block. I 
Ooh, it's a creeper. Luckily, I can sack this in response, so it doesn't really matter. Whoa. <laughs> that allows you to pay for your opponent's artifacts? They don't usually design cards that way these days. Not loving that. I do get a clue as well. Okay. <laughs> Tunnel, huh? Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard. Yeah, there you go. Well, I think we pass. We still have... There's not really a reason to cast No Witnesses just yet. Um, so I'm not going to. I have... I mean, I can block and survive and maybe try and get them to play out something else from their hand here. Maybe animate a land so I can blow it up. <laughs> but yeah, we'll crack a clue at the end of their turn and then cast no witnesses. Almost guaranteed here. That's where we're going to go up. That's what we're going to do. Then we have more removal. <laughs> You know, removal's good. Looks like they are going to animate a land here. So we'll be blocking a 6-6 six, six and a 5-5. Five, five. And cracking a clue. Is that really all you're going to attack with? I would love it if that's all you're going to attack me with. Because I take no damage. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't... Under I guess they're at five, so they're, like, paranoid about haste. I don't know what else to say about what they're doing, actually. I think I'd just be turning everything sideways. They're going to get a clue, of course, but... We're still coming out ahead there by, like, a wide margin. Uh, so, especially if they play another creature here, which they might. Kind of doesn't look like they will, though. Yeah, they're not going to. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, I get another goblin. It's going to get blown up, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm glad we drew a land, because now we can clear the board and then play Innocent Bystander here. So that's nice. Goodbye, everything. All right, there at five. We've got a shock in our hand. And two removal spells in our hand, too, which feels pretty good. Let's see what they have, though. Well, the fact they're already cracking their clue might bode well. Yeah... Um, we're going to take one here, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think we're just supposed to kill this, drop them to three, because then we make shift binding attack again and then shock them to win next turn. I could play Person of Interest instead, but... Aww. <laughs> we do get a clue, so, you know, I'll... It doesn't hurt my feelings that they had to do that. Okay. Seems like a haste creature is pretty good when your opponent's at two. Um, as does... Pers I think we just play Person of Interest and Dogwalker face up here. 
I think that's probably better than playing it face down and the next turn we have red herring. I mean, it's going to be very hard for them not to be dead, so. They need their own sweeper at this point. Because we'll be sending four bodies at them, and if any one of them hits them, they're dead. I guess that was true if I played Dogwalker face down too. But... Yeah. Well, back-to-back -back games we won thanks to our uh, no witnesses. That's pretty sweet. We've managed to use it in situations where, like, our opponent had... Like, sure, they get a clue, but we have, like, three cards in our hand, and we don't really blow up anything of ours, so it's, like, not a big deal. We drew it once when it was awkward, I guess. I guess it was in that game, so in the end it sort of worked out, but... Ooh, this is a bad, bad, bad hand. <laughs> so this is the problem with Public Thoroughfare, is... I'm not doing anything my first two turns if I keep this hand. The question is whether I have a hand that's capable of pulling us back ahead because after we inevitably fall behind and maybe we do but it's not a great hand in general like yeah i've got shock which is nice Ugh. but we have no creatures which is less than optimal yeah we're probably supposed to mulligan this thing Right, this is better. It doesn't look awesome, maybe, but it's better than it looks because of uh, the investigator, inspector. I guess we put slice on the bottom because there's a pretty good chance we never see black mana in this game. And there's a really good chance we see red mana, so. And I think we want to hold on to three lands because we're going to need them. All right, we drew red. I think it's just another let's play Codebreaker on two situation. I hate it when they blow up my clue. Makes me so sad. Send in Codebreaker. We're okay if they block. We're okay if they don't block. Yeah. Play Bystander. We're already pretty much out of gas, which is not a great start. <laughs> yeah. That is a big whip cracker. So, our board looks pretty good, but we can't really <laughs> do anything. Um, ooh, now we really can't do anything. And that transforms. Great. That's just what I was hoping for. Well, it might be time for us to lose. Staring down... what we are. <laughs> like, Massacre Girl makes life pretty impossible. We do have removal for her, so basically we've got to draw it. Oh, good. I'm a little surprised... Like, even if they attack with Massacre Girl here, the best they can do is, like, double block, and then they draw cards. So, like, two. And I could triple block here, but then they draw three cards. So, we just have to take it and, and pray. That's the spot we're in, unfortunately. It is funny that we drew the mana that I thought we wouldn't draw, you know? Look out. We can tap our Crobot Haunch. <laughs> uh, I could attack with my Codebreaker here, I guess. Or Person of Interest. That's probably a little better, because it can't block anyway. So, let's just send it in. Yeah, they can block and draw cards still. Actually, they won't draw cards, because its power will still be high enough. So that's okay, I think. Oh, just kidding. Toughness. Does it check toughness? It does check toughness. Well, yeah, that's not so good. And obviously they named uh, this, so we're just we're just toast here, pretty much. Probably were even without my ill-advised attack a minute ago.
I could have tried to kill Massacre Girl, but there's like no way. They did oops, so maybe maybe I could have, but <laughs> I can't imagine. Maybe we'll top deck our sweeper. That's kind of what needs to happen here, and we do not. We're not dead yet, though. So, and actually, I can crack my clue first. Hmm. That doesn't do a whole lot of good here. Guess I'll kill their face down card. Maybe killing their token is better. Oh, I bet they oops because they forgot which one they named and so they didn't get to do more damage to us last turn. That's what it was. The problem is that they keep drawing cards if I block. So yeah, I can crack the haunch, make two bodies, but then they draw two cards. So it's like, if I do draw my sweeper, they're going to have so many cards in their hand that I have like no hope of winning this thing. But I guess we'll try to play it out. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and murder my Codebreaker in the meantime. That was a Vengeful Creeper. So yeah, I mean, even if we draw our Sweeper this turn, we're dead. You know, we can block these two and go to four. Well, now we can't even really do that conceivably. But, oh yeah, they can even give that Trample. So yeah, that's that's the game. Hard to beat Massacre Girl. Uh, you know, you got to get her off the board is the only way you beat her. And we did not. And we had, you know, a bad start too. Didn't really help our cause. Another hand where we have surprisingly little removal, but it is better, I mean, creatures rather, but it is better than our other uh, creatureless hand was, so I can live with it. This is kind of creatures, you know? Yep. <laughs> we do have our sweeper, which has been our friend, so. I think we're still supposed to kill this thing so that they don't, uh, you know, pull way ahead on board. Sure, I can always know witnesses, but it seems like... It seems like I don't want to do that super early, and I might have to if, uh, you know... Well, it seems like they're out of stuff, which we are too, but we can at least crack our haunch to make a couple 1-1s one -ones here if we want to. <laughs> and if they don't do anything, that's probably what I do. Okay, that's what we're going to do then. Take that. Um, yeah. I say... Might have their own sweeper, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. Are our dogs just going to keep hitting them for two every turn, or what? Well, if we detonation, we get to... And attack for two, we get to solve this. So that's probably what we do. It was a crocodile, so I don't hate that. Hopefully they whiff. I have liked this. I've had decks where I have three of the um, enchantment removal spell and, like, one other random enchantment. You know, like that thing. Um, and uh, it feels pretty good when you hit one of those. So, what am I supposed to do here? Can't attack them anymore. If I case and I hit a creature, they're just going to remove it. I'm 
But I guess just getting that out of their hands, not too bad. Hmm. Might hit black mana, I guess, but... There is unfortunately a possibility that they can hit this with removal, so that's why I'm considering using it now, but I don't think I do in this situation. Might do it next turn, depending on what's going on, but... Okay, so probably just shock this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and crack this. See what's what. Hmm. None of that's great, honestly. Um, red herring. I guess red herring's not completely useless on this board, so that's probably... Well, kind of is. Because I'm going to shock the face down. But I can also draw off of it, so I think it's probably a little better than Bystander is here. Yeah. So yeah, let's shock. That time it was a fairy. Yeah, we're probably just going to crack this and draw a card, so <laughs> as unexciting as that is, that's probably the game plan. Ooh, yeah. Well. Well, now it's time for no witnesses and... Hmm. Hmm. I guess if I just draw a card here, it's basically a wash that they get a clue. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and draw. Okay, so we can no witnesses and then play face down Rift Burst Hellion, which seems pretty good. They're already going to get a clue, so I may as well send the dogs in here. The bad news is they're just going to kill our Rift Burst Hellion, of course, but, you know, what are you going to do? The other face down was the scary centaur. Yeah, they have a clue and they have removal. You know, every other time we've cast our sweeper, we've had a much better hand than we do right now. Well, now they can't actually sweep our creature this turn. So that's cool. Or kill our creature this turn. I think we attack and if they don't block... If they don't block, do I just play a face down offender at large? Is it better just play face up offender at large and attack them? Probably not. Yeah, so let's let's attack them with our face down card here. Do I just turn it face up for my turn? Probably not. Eh, I probably do. Makes them use their removal on it, and then hopefully offender at large can do its thing. Although. Yeah, it can buff itself, can't it? Hmm. Yeah, let's just hit him for two. Honestly, I think making them pay extra for their removal spell right now is slows down their turn significantly. I mean, they have to pay five to get rid of our two twos. Um, so I think playing another face down works for me. Yeah, there's that clue I gave him. Yeah, so which one do they hit? Not really any value in turning it face up. So maybe we can bluff that this card is actually something if we don't. Yeah. 
There's our makeshift binding. I don't really feel the pressure to use it right now. Um, I think we just hit them for six here. Hopefully. We might have exile target attacking creature or something. We drop them to eight. Yeah, that's more than a little annoying. When you have a uh, face down creature in play. Yeah, that hurts, but. I think we just makeshift binding their sentry and hit them for six. Yeah, that'll do it. So I think every game we've cast our sweeper, we've won. And that one, that one might not have gone our way, but um, ended up working out, you know. We weren't in as good of a position as we were every other time we used it, but we were in a pretty good position and we had... You know, the, the two disguise creatures really did cause them problems. Like, it made it very hard for them to add to their board, and we kept adding something to the board, so. Ooh, one of these hands again. <laughs> However, we do have fixing for all colors, but we're also not going first. If I was going first, I think I would keep this hand because there's a decent chance, you know, first of all, I'll have Slice online, and, you know, I can play everything in my hand, more or less. But not going first, not doing anything for two turns is rough. I mean, there's a chance I draw mana so I can at least play the tracker. So they have to spend some resources on that. But I think this is another mulligan. And I think we made the right choice. Um, hmm. Sort of feels like I need to hold on to the lands. I probably put detonation back. Yeah, this hand's a lot better than our other one was. In fact, we have like... Pretty perfect mana, and we drew another two drop, which doesn't hurt. Four, I'm familiar. I mean, it's a creature. <laughs> it is like maybe the worst card in our deck. It's up there um, in our deck that didn't quite get their own playables. But it's not. It's fine. I think we. I think we probably leave it. So Vengeful Tracker is likely to be extra good in this matchup. Um, they're also reasonably likely to have a counter spell here. I think we probably just play a Code Breaker here, especially because we can, you know, case of burning masks next turn. They have a chance of having counter magic for sure, but I think that's fine. Yeah, it looks like they have it. Or maybe not. They might just have Shock too. Or galvanize. That hurts a little less than shock in terms of equity, mana equity, but. Okay. Well. I'm thinking face down defenestrated phantom. This one might get countered. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Cold Case Cracker is annoying because they're going to get a clue if I kill it. But we can punish clues, at least. I'm probably supposed to still kill it. Like, you know. We kind of even out eventually, probably, because we'll, we'll solve this, so. Don't think we're supposed to play a one-mana forum familiar. That doesn't really seem like um, a great plan to me, so... A land there would have been nice because I could have shocked this and played Vengeful Tracker, but now we can't do that. We're just going to shock it instead. And what did we kill? Offender at large. They're going to crack that clue before we have our tracker in play, which makes me a little sad, but... 
What are you gonna do? All right, so we'll play our thoroughfare. Tap this planes, play a face down Hellion. Do they, they like counter magic, so <laughs> it might be, yep. Yeah. They are hitting us hard with the counter magics. Well, okay. So we'll play Vengeful Tracker. Face down Forum Familiar. I think, you know, given what the board looks like, we're supposed to be playing stuff out. And, um, you know, this will be our backup plan. Right now, they're in a way better position than we are, like, in terms of cards and whatnot, so. Yeah, that's dead. Alright, so I think we just play out a Fender at large. You know, keep making them interact, you know, that's so far what they've been doing. But at some point, they have to run out of cards, you know. <laughs> yeah, they shock our Vengeful Tracker, but we still have a 5-4, so I can live with it. Hmm. So now we finally play a Codebreaker face down. It is kind of awkward with no witnesses in our hand, I guess, but... If we're this far ahead on board, I don't think we care about no witnesses. So I think we play it face down here. And just try to reload our hand and go off, like, and kill them. Um, I guess it's going to be five still to morph it. Is it just better to play it face up? Probably not. The utility is just too good, like, of playing it face down here. Hitting them for two is nice and all, but... It's not exactly um, amazing either. Yeah, okay. We wouldn't have hit them for two anyway, so. I think there's a very good chance we just throw no witnesses away in this game. <laughs> Which I said we might end up doing at some point. Um, it'll depend. You know, if they play something real here. Ooh. Now I really want to throw no witnesses away because... Um, it doesn't do anything against Detective Satchel. I mean, I can blow up the Thopters, but no one's going to care if I do that. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, and we have to win quickly or they're going to outvalue us with the Satchel, so... I think we just attack with both of these here. Plan on flipping the code breaker. I attack with it face down first because it can actually get in for... They, they won't block it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so we'll just do seven. Works for me. And then we will turn this face up. Pretty good. We can even play Novice Inspector right away. That's a pretty good draw. The Thopters are going to be annoying. and But I think we can probably find a way to do 10 to them. Yes, yeah, so you have a big body and you get another Thopter. But I can makeshift binding the big body at least. And I have my own big body. This will be a 3-2 as well if we make shift binding, which is obviously pretty good. <clears throat> Ooh, that's pretty gross. I'm going to start drawing cards. Um, I think we still go after the 4-5. Like, we just need to do as much damage as we can, as quickly as we can, or we're going to lose to the Satchel. So, we are likely to, to solve this this turn as well, which is good news. I'm going to crack this clue first. Ooh. 
five, seven. So I can potentially do lethal here, and I think that's what we try for. So let's play makeshift binding. Hit the criminologists. Then we detonate the thopter. I guess like shock saves them. No, they don't have it. So <laughs> that time we finally had a game where into hostilities was awkward, but we had a way to just throw it away and get more cards. So it didn't really matter. So that that worked out pretty well. We finally got to flip our um, little code breaker guy too, instead of just slamming in with him on turn two, which is basically all he'd done at that point. It's funny because this deck has some questionable cards in it. Um, like the last three playables we put in our deck are like two suspicious detonations and a forum familiar. Um, but we're at six wins, but I think, you know, some of that's variance. I think this deck's probably overperforming a little, but we do, you know, the cards we do have, we have some, you know, we have two copies of a really strong rare and code breaker and then a sweeper, which sweepers can always, you know, spike games for you. And that's what they've been doing. This is a keeper. I mean, even, like, Rift Burst Hellion isn't exactly amazing. Um, we have... The average power level of the cards in our deck isn't great, I think I would say. Yeah, we're not playing Dogwalker face-up here, so... if You you only do that if you have to, basically. Um, or, you know, sometimes it makes sense to do in, like, the late game. Yeah, Inside Source is obnoxious. Um... I think we go face down dog walker now. End our turn. We take two. Yeah, Museum Night Watch is not a lot of fun, um, since they get a body if they block. I'm trying to decide if I still just want to attack here, because I have Auspicious Arrival if I really want it. Um, and then I can still turn my Dog Walker face up. Sure, they end up with two two twos over there. But... It doesn't seem awful. I mean, the other option is playing Person of Interest. But, yeah, I think an attack. Get a clue. Play Offender at Large next turn. Like, that seems pretty good. Um, so it's funny, we don't want to turn it face up first, because then we end up with, um, with a dead, this won't survive, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Alright, then we end our turn. If only the dogs entered untapped, like they do with the haunch, you know? Hmm, spicy. So I guess they're gonna kill my face down card here. But I'll make two dogs before it happens. This will transform is the bad news. Yeah, that is very bad news, in fact. Um, so let's play our offender. I 
gonna buff a dog because leaving um, this back at least means I can get a clue if I block. If they have removal for offender at large here, we're kind of dead. Short of like end hostilities. But even that, like I need them to, they're gonna need to do more on board for that to make sense. Well, that is good news that they couldn't really attack me. Two face down Rift Burst Hellions seems like a pretty good turn. They can both turn face up next turn. Um, do we hold on to the Offender here? Or do I swing in with it and try to get a trade? I don't know. Next turn, attacking with it and two face down six seven seems pretty good, but trading for the eavesdropper is perfectly fine, I think. Yeah. Or for two tokens or any number of other options. Um. Yeah, that works for me. Don't hate that they're doing that. You know, sometimes... Yeah, sample collector. I can live with the sample collector. So, this means we're going to swing with both face-down creatures. Um, because one will trade with something and the other will just run over whatever blocks it. So... Which probably means sample collector, I would think. I guess they could block both with tokens. That's That might be optimal for them. But yeah, we just go ahead and run over the... One of them. Doesn't mean they have a good attack here, which is less than ideal. Well, there goes our Rift Burst Hellion, too. That's a lot less than ideal. <laughs> they can even... Oh, no, it costs three to give Vigilance. I guess I don't have a great attack here, because I can throw bodies in front of, like, Sample Collector. Well, I'd have to block with three things. Because it'll be a 4-4. Four, four. So that's not exactly great, I guess. I wonder if... Are we just at a spot where we have to draw out the game and hope we draw into hostilities? <laughs> Maybe. I'm a little surprised they attacked with Inside Source. What's the deal there? I mean, there's a good chance they have a trick, but I think making them burn it is fine. As is just killing inside source. Ooh, can they get it back? Reanimate it as a flyer and get another 2-2? Because that would be pretty bad. <laughs> For us, I mean. No, it's just a novice inspector. Okay... Face down, forum familiar, like chump block with inspector, bounce it back to our hand does not seem bad to me. It sort of feels like that's the spot we're, the unfortunate spot we're in right now, so.
might put it on the inspector this time, I guess. No, they do not. Well, in that case, we'll go block like this. And turn this face up to return our inspector. It's not awesome, but you know, it's not terrible. Okay. Unfortunately, this just got out of range of being killed by, uh, by it. But I can kill the eavesdropper, at least. And I think we go ahead and attack with the dog here. Yeah. Then play our inspector again. Them solving this early has been very bad for us. So we block with bystander here, I think. Um, gives us a clue. So it's not the worst chump block in the world. They have so many cards in their hand, which is a little upsetting, given the whole uh, end hostilities being, like, maybe our best way to win this game, but if they have that many cards in their hand, it's not going to be a great way to win the game. We do have the ability to draw... Ooh. That'll only be a 5, 6, 5. Big deal. No big deal. So, like... If I draw in Hostilities, do I just have to cast it, like, now? It sort of feels that way. Okay... Um, I guess I'm just going to play another innocent bystander. Hold on to our person for now. Trample trick means we're dead. Um... Sure, we'll just block both of you. Just play out everything in your hand. And then, well... <laughs> doesn't feel like that's going to do a whole lot, but... It's not too terrible after end hostilities when you can, like... Yeah, they did just play a card right off the top of their library after I said that. You know, if I tapped my mana more intelligently, I could have shocked this thing. Actually, no, I couldn't have because of disguise. Okay. Let's draw another card. Where are you in hostilities? Why are you why are you being like this? Um Okay. So Get rid of that. Play red herring. I think we're just planning on blocking and cracking the herring here. The reason I'm holding on to person of interest is I'm hoping I can cast it after end hostilities. And playing it right now just adds one body that can block to the board anyway. I mean, maybe I had to do it here since I'm dead to, like, removal, but... It just feels like end hostilities is our only real hope anyway. So it's <laughs> it's not um, 
crucial that I play it. So we're just going to block the two big creatures here, and then we'll draw with red herring. If they have the trample trick, we're just dead, because now there's no blocker. We don't have our black mana. Okay. Another creature. Aw. I was at least hoping we'd draw it, even though it had no hope of getting us there, you know? But, <laughs> but we didn't. It would have been fun to blow up the board. They would have gotten a clue and still had, like, more cards in hand than we do, but, you know. That would have been fine. All right, so we got one game left, no matter what happens. We're either going 7-2 and two and six and, or 6-3. Six and three. Pretty good hand. I mean, I wish I was going first. I wish I had more red mana, but I can't complain too much. At least I shouldn't complain too much. All right, we are going to get red mana, which is good news. But yeah, we have our sweeper and our great two drop, both of which have served us pretty well. I mean, even, you know, the code breaker hasn't been that exciting in some games, but just having a two mana, two one haste that cracks in and then trades with something, like, that's surprisingly valuable. It does look a little less good here, since our opponent uh, played out a two-drop. I think I play it here no matter what. It's just a question of whether I attack with it. I mean, I think I probably do. I could wait because of Case of the Burning Masks, which would create like a better situation to some extent, but... Yeah, we just trade. It's less good when it's just a trade, but as a fail case, like, trading your two drop for their two drop is a pretty good fail case. Um, am I just supposed to kill their face down creature here? Probably. Probably. It was another nervous gardener. So this can actually bounce Kate this case, which is pretty nice. I guess I could have done that in the last game, huh? I don't know if it would have mattered. All their creatures were so big, but it was a possibility. So like next turn, it would be cool to kill something, then turn this face up, then Kate get the case back. That would be a pretty good turn, obviously. Don't play something so big I can't kill it, though. That's that's what I don't want. <laughs> okay. Well, can't do it all in the same turn now because of the mana, but we do kill one of these. It's just a question of which one. And what did we kill? Vengeful Creeper. That that feels pretty good. Um am I supposed to attack here? Probably. Yeah. Okay. We're both down to very little, but I feel like... <laughs> That's less than ideal. Okay. Well, I don't want to fire off no witnesses just yet, but yeah, that them slamming a big creature, I guess it makes sense that they did that, given um, that they were willing to block how they did. Ooh. Yeah, that's... We're probably going to have to cast no witnesses. Which, if I can draw something that I can play this turn, would feel pretty good, but... If 
four, five, six, seven. Do I just let them hit me here? I mean, they're going to have two clues anyway. And if I can get them to play out one to two more things, like that's just so much better. And then next turn, I can know witnesses and person. I think we just have to hope that works out. Yeah, they draw a card. We go to five. They may not play anything because they know a sweeper is possible. No, they do play something. Now play the other thing. Oh, They didn't play the other thing. Well, it's time for no witnesses. Enjoy your clue. They're going to crack it now. And then they're going to get another one. Not looking great for us, though. I mean, they have to have bricked on a bunch of draws here to uh, not be in okay shape. You know, they're at 20, we're at 5. Oh my god. <laughs> That's like the worst possible thing that can happen after you cast a sweeper. Your opponent just plays out Ezrum. So, our only hope here is to find our banishing light thing, right? Oh, he can even get hexproof, right? Ugh. Oh god. Well, I don't think we have any hope then. But just for fun... Let's see what's on top of our deck. Yeah, I mean, no witnesses worked out pretty well for the most part, but that last game is the kind of game where, like, you know, that's where, like, a sweeper just isn't, just isn't what you want, you know. But it is, I don't think we would have won six games without it, so it definitely got us there, even if it was a bit of a dud there. Um... But six wins, that's very, very good, I think, for a deck that I feel like the draft was kind of a train wreck, so I'll take it.